To worship in the loft. We're glad you're all here. Grab your coffee and feel free to come grab a seat with us. I do have a few announcements. As you're gathering back this way, you'll find a page of announcements in your sheet on your chair. And if you will, take a minute to sign in using the QR code. It helps us know who's worshiping with us and how to greet one another after the worship service. You'll also see a few other announcements listed there. Feel free to take it home with you and put it up on the fridge today. Just so that you do know, some of them want to lift up, we do have Discover Trinity starting next week. Discover Trinity is our class for folks who are wanting to learn more about Trinity, learn more about becoming a member, learn more about the ways to engage and what it means to be a membership here at Trinity Presbyterian Church. Another exciting event this evening, I think it starts at 6 o'clock, our 4th and 5th graders will have a recreation time together with dinner. It is not too late to sign up. I know we have a good group already coming, right, Miss Elizabeth? But if anyone else wants to come, I invite you to come. We'll be inside. It'll be warm, so you don't have to worry about the weather. And finally, wanted to give a short update on our Afghan resettlement work that we've been doing here at Trinity back in the fall. We had a fantastic fundraiser, raising enough funds to help resettle one family, and then we realized we had enough to do a second family. So that first family is up and being settled. There's four members, mom, dad, and a son and daughter. They have mentors meeting with them weekly. We set up the apartment, and now we're going to start with a second family. So we are collecting a few last household items, towels, things like that. If you look on our website, you'll find a place to sign up, or you can give me a call, and I'll help get you connected. We are excited about all of the ways to engage. If you are ever looking for ways to come and be involved in our community, feel free to reach out to one of our pastors or our staff as we find ways to be community together. We are glad you are here. <coughs> Friends, let us join together in our call to worship. Let the ears of all people be attentive. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Everything, Everything around, around us proclaims God's handiwork. Let, Let us bow down, down and worship our creator. creator. Day and night, God is at work among us. We are drawn together into one body, the church. As we, As we commune, commune with God, God we, we know, know we need one another. 
Let us honor the good to be found in all people. Good morning. Please stand as we sing our opening song, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Wendell Berry said in his poem, The Peace of Wild Things, when despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound and fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and I lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. We are free because we rest not simply in grace, but in God's grace. And when we give up control over forethought and things of the past, we come into the freedom given to us by Christ. So let us now go to God with our confessions, the things that we need to let go of to be free. Please join me. Sometimes, God, we do not know what to confess. We seek to keep your law, but the right course is not always clear. We want to follow your direction but it is hard to discern what is true. Sometimes it is difficult to care about people whose values are different from ours. How can we be one with those who do not share our beliefs? At times, our own faith is shaken. Our faith in ourselves and our faith in you. We need your help, God so our sins will not have dominion over us. Amen. Whether in this moment or not, Christ has taken up all of our guilt, all of our shame, all of our worry. Christ has already done that. So rest in this, knowing that through the grace of Christ given through his death and resurrection, you are forgiven and we are set free. To God be the glory. Amen. 
With that freedom, with the peace that we have in it, let us now turn to our neighbor, say hello, and offer the peace of Christ. worshiping with us today who would like to come forward to come join me up on the stairs. I think Miss Elizabeth might be here as well. <sighs> Glad to see y'all today. There were a few moments this morning where I thought it might just be me and Pastor Andrew and Terry. <laughs> so I'm glad that more of you showed up today for worship. It's always good. So I have a question for you guys. And we can look at them or not, so either way. Do any of y'all play baseball? What positions do you play? All of them? I used to play baseball and softball, and I was a third baseman and a catcher, mostly because I wasn't very fast. What other positions are there on a baseball field? Does anybody know? Have you watched a game? Shortstop, second base. Miss Elizabeth, what about you? Pitcher, she has some natural talent there, I can tell. <laughs> One of the things I love about a baseball field is that it's really hard to play all the positions at once, right? It's such a big space that it takes all those different players, someone out in center field, someone as the catcher behind the plate, and you gotta have a pitcher to make the full team. Our passage today that we're gonna talk about is from Paul, and he's talking about everyone who has different gifts and how we need all those pieces. So kind of like a baseball team, we need a shortstop and a first baseman here in our church in order to play the best game we can. It's really hard when we're alone. So as we're reading the passage today, I hope you'll think about what gifts you bring. Maybe you're a really great shortstop, but maybe you're a really great musician. So what are the gifts that you bring to this place and the ways that you are part of the body of Christ? Will y'all pray with me? Just repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us gifts. Thank you for giving us baseball. And thank you for giving us this community. Amen. Thank you all. Feel free to go back to your seats if you want. There's some paper and crayons over there if you want to color. And I think the sidewalk chalk's there if you want to make pictures. Glad you're all here today.
I got you covered, Andrew. Before we read our scripture, let us go to God in prayer. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, and in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. We are reading from the 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? And as it is, there are many members, yet one body, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? but strive for the greater gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was in first grade, I decided I wanted to play the flute. I'm not sure what the impetus behind this desire was. We had no flute players in the family, but every year for Christmas and my birthday, I asked for flute lessons. Finally, for my ninth birthday, I got my wish. I got a flute because I was so short. It was one that curved around and I had to hold it like this. But with my flute in hand, I started my dream of being a musician. I practiced every day, much to the chagrin of my siblings. I worked hard and listened to the instructor, at least as much as any nine-year-old does. However, After six months and very little progress, my flute instructor informed me and my mom that I should probably think about other hobbies. Paul writes that are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, and what I can tell you is all are not flautists and all are not musicians. Thank God for the good gifts of Brittany and our band because Lord knows that's not the gift I bring to Trinity. But I did all right. 
over the years, through different experiences, through trial and error, through relationships with others, I too found my gifts. For instance, just this weekend, I was reminded of my spiritual gift of assembling IKEA furniture. <laughs> that one's going to really take me places. <laughs> Friends, Paul was writing to a contentious church in which individuals were vying for position and importance. Church members were seeking recognition more than collaboration. Some of the people in the church in Corinth were claiming that to be a really spiritual person meant that you exercised more of those spectacular public spiritual gifts. And if you weren't gifted in one of those ways, well, then obviously you were a lesser Christian. This need to compare and to rank inevitably leads to conflict, and these conflicts were dividing the church of Corinth. Paul is endeavoring to teach a different paradigm. He argues that we are all better off when we respect and honor diversity. This is the ideal, but in real life, it is desperately difficult. Paul uses the analogy of our physical bodies to illustrate the physical truth that the individual members of the body are all necessary and belong. It is ridiculous to think that a whole person could only be an ear or an eye. The body performs too many different functions to single out one. Every one of us belongs. Every one of us has a purpose and a function. Because the body is so interconnected, what happens to any of us happens to all of us. It is a simple concept to grasp but much more difficult to live. Differences define uniqueness, but do not define worth. We are tempted to think of these differences as barriers to unity, as obstacles to overcome, but by making diversity a gift of God, this passage reorders the issue of power in the church. One gift is not greater than the other, and what we learn from this passage is that we need each other to be whole. We need Brittany to help lead us in music. We need Paul and Emily on our soundboard. We need the property committee to keep the lights on and the building going. We need one another gathering together to care and love for one another. The point is that what keeps the body functioning properly is precisely the need for each member. Paul is reminding the people of Corinth and us that we are all intertwined. The body of Christ, the body of Trinity, is filled with the gifts of the Spirit, a diversity of gifts. One of the tasks of the community is to discern these gifts and to provide ways in which we can use them. Recently, I was listening to a podcast, and I heard a local pastor speaking about Paul's words. He highlighted the importance of call and giftedness. He said that many in congregational leadership feel as if their ranks are depleted, and with numerous gaps to fill, we are happy with just a warm body. The challenge with this approach, he says, is brought to light within our text from Paul's correspondence with the congregation in Corinth. Paul asked these questions, are all apostles, are all teachers, are all miracle workers, are all, heal are all healers? This section, when placed within the larger point that Paul is trying to make, leads us to the realization that the answer to these questions is no. No, not everyone is an apostle. No, not everyone is a teacher. No, not everyone is a miracle worker. And the same can be said of the ministries that we just have to fill within the lives of our congregations. Are all ushers, are all Stephen ministers, are all committee co-chairs? I think the answer is the same, no. This podcast went on to say that what happens in so many of our congregations is that we are so desperate to fill the gaps that we fail to have the meaningful conversations about call and giftedness. 
In writing to the church in Corinth, Paul knows that we need each other to be a fuller expression of the body of Christ because we are all good at and not so good at the other things. And in some ways, do we not undercut the meaning of Paul's teaching on the body of Christ by trying to make people fill in our ministry gaps? To put it another way, wouldn't we be more faithfully embodying Paul's vision if we stopped asking what ministries need to be filled and instead asked what ministries are our members and friends actually called and gifted for? I think one of the challenges facing the church today is that we do not ask people what they are passionate about. We rarely ask people to share the gifts they hold close, gifts that are on the margins and perhaps even assumed not to be there at all. This is not an easy question. It is hard enough to think about what ministries need to be filled, to flip everything and ask ourselves, what ministries are our members and friends of Trinity actually called and gifted for pushes us deeper into relationships. It makes us move beyond that which we are comfortable with, that which we already know works, and occasionally means nudging a young nine-year-old to put down the flute and explore other hobbies. Now, to be clear, my flute instructor wasn't mean or cold-hearted. She simply realized that I would rather be outside, that my hand-eye coordination was fit for other activities. She opened the door for me to other spiritual gifts. A friend of mine is a pastor down in Mobile, and she tells the story of a man in her church. He was an elder who owned a car dealership his whole life. He had recently retired right before she came to the church. And when he came on session, she thought, I'll put him on finance or property or maybe personnel. That fit his background in business. But this man, his heart was in Christian ed, specifically children's ministry. So now he is chairing the CE committee and was at the church just last week counting costumes from their Christmas pageant. Because she asked his preference and because he was willing to speak up about where his interests and passions lie, he is using his spiritual gifts in new and exciting ways. Friends, this text suggests that every single person in the church matters the lifelong members to the first-time visitors, those worshiping here in person and those worshiping via live stream, our church elders and the children of our church, alongside the generous givers and hard workers. This is a reality we can name, which has less to do with equality and more to do with wholeness. To achieve this wholeness, we turn to the hard work of discernment, of asking ourselves what gifts God has graced us with, what gifts we might be able to share with the community, of asking others what gifts they see in us. The hard question is, have we gotten to know each other well enough to know what part of the body God has gifted us each to be? Because here's the thing, Paul is very clear the Spirit has bestowed upon us a variety of gifts. But as far as 1 Corinthians is concerned, there is no such thing as belonging without participation. If we want to be a true and healthy representation of the body of Christ, we need all the gifts out there. And this isn't in a celebratory or ceremonial way where we talk about these lovely gifts we all have but not actually use them. No, these are gifts we need. We need to be whole. There is a reason the Spirit called us all together. We each have something to offer God's work in the world. But we must step up. We must engage. We must use our gifts that God gave us so that others might know God's love. Knowing the community is the body of Christ and caring for the common good, that is what faith in Jesus looks like. Using our gifts and recognizing the gifts in others is how we show our love to the world. 
For God has so arranged the body that in the words of our denomination's book of order, the organization rests upon the fellowship of the congregation and is not designed to work without love and trust. Each of us must strive together for the greater gift of one spirit. Friends, let us keep asking ourselves how we might use our gifts in this place. Let us help name the gifts we see in others and listen for God's call to be just who we are, uniquely gifted and equipped for ministry in God's name. Amen. Friends, I hope that you'll take a few moments and turn your chairs with those around you and talk about those gifts that you see in yourself that maybe others don't see. And if you're comfortable, maybe talk about the gifts you see in those in this space. So feel free to take a few minutes, turn your chairs, and let's share those gifts that God has given us.
so glad that you are having uh, important and meaningful conversations with all the pieces of the body of Christ who are with us here uh, worshiping this morning. We hope that those conversations will continue. Um, please join me now as we go to God in prayer. Holy God, we come to you as a people looking for guidance, looking for direction, confused about the ways that we should go often, confused about who we should or shouldn't be listening to or interacting with. Lord, remind us that we are all created in your image. Help us to be led by your spirit in all the things that we do. Help us to see your image in all people. Help us to live into that image and help us to help others to do the same. We come to you, God, with questions about the state of our city and our country and our world. Maybe questions about our families or our jobs or relationships. Lord, we seek you. We knock on this door, Lord. We pray that you will open it, that you will give us answers, even if they are answers that we do not like. Lord, we ask for your presence in our world, particularly this day, as there are so many who are facing power outages, particularly up in the Northeast, with terrible storms and blizzards, feeling the cold and lacking in warmth. We pray that in these cold days that we would all feel the warmth of your presence. Lord, and we also pray that power would be returned to those who are in terribly difficult situations with children and elderly folks needing to be warmth, warmed by a fireplace or by their power being back on. We pray for those in the Ukraine who are facing what seems like imminent war. We pray that war would cease, that all wars would cease. We also pray for protection for those who are seeking to deal with these situations diplomatically and those who are risking their lives to protect others. Lord, we pray for our spirits that they would be led towards you. We pray for our minds that they would be healed. We pray for our bodies, our ailments. The doctors would be able to treat them, that our communities would be able to support us. We pray for those who are dealing with loss, loss of life, loss of job, loss of confidence, loss of assurance in you for those who are towards the end of life, that they may know that in life and in death that they belong to you. We come now to you, God, and we pray the words that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to consider giving to Trinity, to our mission and participating with God to make God's love visible. If you're worshiping with us this morning, you can leave your offerings in the baskets as you leave. If you're worshiping with us online, you can give online at trinityatlanta.org forward slash give or by sending in a check to the church or texting the number on your screen. Let us give generously as God has given generously to us. And let us stand and sing our final song together. <laughs>
As you leave today, remember, take time to recognize the gifts you see in others. Take time to recognize the gifts you see in yourselves so that we might all be the body of Christ in the world. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.